Hello and welcome to the Alliance for Democracy's The Populist Dialogues. Our program promotes progressive populist perspectives on the issues of the day. The Alliance for Democracy is dedicated to establishing true democracy and creating a just society based on an equitable, sustainable economy. Our guest today is Tom Sensick. Tom is a nurse and president of Healthcare for All Oregon. He's also been a Bernie Sanders activist with the Oregon Democratic Party. So welcome to the show. Well, thanks. I'm so happy to be here, David. Yeah, great, good. Uh, so Healthcare for All Oregon, let's just start with, what is that? Well, Healthcare for All Oregon is a non-for-profit, uh, 501c3, basically trying to give, I can give the whole mission statement, equitable, affordable, comprehensive, publicly funded, accessible health care for all. Okay. And um, basically the movement of our organization is to bring the single payer movement forward because we do not think that the items in our mission statement can be realized until we address the, the financial controllers, which are the insurance industry and the pharmaceutical companies as a primary people that are um, obstructing us from using our dollars for health care in the right way. Oh, right, yeah, because they charge too much. They charge too much, and that charge, of course, as everybody knows, is administrative fees uh, in the insurance company offices uh, in the and also in the provider offices. Providers uh, um, spend a lot of administrative dollars just trying to deal with the insurance companies and the billing. Um, and so, again, accessible, I'll go back to that word of accessible, is provider availability. And when providers aren't available, when they're spending time pushing papers, wondering how, and working with patients about how things are gonna get paid for, right? So to have the security from the patient end and the provider end, when you come in, you just focus on your healthcare problems and you get it, get that addressed mm -hmm. and not worry about the funding. Yeah, yes, uh, yeah, and um, my, my partner just yesterday, and he has insurance, uh, we had to take him to the emergency room and he was he was fine, but but he was worried about it and still is. Was like, well, after the insurance pays, how much does that still leave me having to pay? And it's going to be a good sized chunk of money. Everybody or somebody they know has that exact story. Mm -hmm. They go in, they start whether it's something uh, minor or something uh, big like cancer treatment. Should I get this treatment? What is it going to cost me? Am I going to go uh, financially bankrupt, uh, lose my property? Um, oh, what if I lose my job? Then how, what, what will I do to get it paid for? Mm -hmm. There's, it's just, uh, stories are so many, and as a nurse, nurse practitioner, I've heard those stories. I can tell uh, uh, many of them in terms of wasted time. If it's okay, I can tell you one brief please, one. That please I, do, yeah. uh, An 11 year old uh, girl uh, walks in, had lost a lot of weight. She was very depressed. Um, was down to about 60 some pounds, or maybe from her, like 90 pounds. And um, that 11 year old girl um, had insurance, and not state insurance, um, private insurance. And uh, so with that, as you know, there's a, a panel. Who are the providers you're okay to see? That the, the insurance company becomes the gatekeeper and decides who the providers are. Limiting your freedom uh, to choose. And so I started, well, I got to get her some help. I called up a psychiatrist uh, right away that was on the list. I'm sorry, cannot see that person today. Um, went down the list, kept trying to find people, no access. This was three hours of my clinic time trying to help this uh, person that was suicidal. Mm. And um, so finally said, well, I guess I'm just going to send you to the emergency room. And of course, we try to keep people out of the emergency room. They're very expensive. Well, at the end of the day, she went to the emergency room and saw the psychiatrist that I made with the first, that I called the very, the very oh. first phone call. Three hours of my wasted time instead of mm -hmm. providing access for other people. Hmm. Okay, and so if we had a single payer uh, system, and I want you to come back to this and define what a single payer system is, but if we had a single payer system, how would her story be different? Well, um, under the system that we want is you go to the provider of your choice, right? So I w would have known other providers that would have seen her, seen that patient. Uh, it wouldn't be a paneling system, mm -hmm. right? 
Uh, oh, I know a psychiatrist that's available. I will have you see that person. I have somebody in, uh, um, I have a mental health therapist available to me that they probably could have seen. But again, um, so one call, get the person in to the person I know that's available. Mm -hmm. And uh, the story would have been, I would have been taking care of other people and uh, her family would have got the care mm -hmm. that she needed uh, right away and the cost would have been way less, no, no emergency room visit. Uh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. And, and of course, you know, I would imagine that someone who is depressed, the last thing they want to do is spend like three hours waiting in the emergency room to be seen, which is all too common. Yeah, yes, right. very, very common. And the family worried, wondering whether, whether she was getting the care. Because uh, as, as time goes by, the stress level goes up, mm -hmm. and that just aggravates the whole. Mm -hmm. Situation. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So, talk about what single payer is. Well, uh, single payer is a, a financing system for healthcare. It's a system that exists in uh, many other countries in the world, where the money gets pooled into one place, depending on uh, what the plan might be going forward. But we already have. Let me talk about this. We have people on Medicaid, Medicare. Um, we have people on teachers, public employees. They're already in some kind of publicly funded system. That's over half the people in the state of Oregon, uh, Medicaid, get uh, publicly funded care of some kind. Mm -hmm. um, we would figure out how to pool the rest of the dollars through some system, and what under that, the provider would know where the money's coming from, how much they're gonna get paid, and the patient would know their services are covered. It's it's that it's mm -hmm. basically that simple, mm -hmm. right? right. Uh, so basically, it ma basically means better care because uh, you have less time wasted. Uh, you get more care because you can use that money to take care of more people, and uh, you get um, less money. Mm -hmm. And so all of those things are true. There was a report called the Rand Report that was that showed that. For the same amount of money that we're spending right now in Oregon, we can cover everyone. 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 So uh, there, there's our evidence. Mm -hmm. More people, less money. Okay. And they didn't even consider in that report the provider time that would be saved, nor did they do, um, consider the cost of pharmaceuticals that would be saved. This would allow us to negotiate with pharmaceutical companies on drug pricing, which we cannot do right now. Okay, uh, and so there, there are efforts to create a single payer healthcare system at the federal level and in Oregon uh, as a state system. Um, I understand that it's federal law that we can't negotiate with pharmaceutical companies for pricing. So if we created a, a state system would they be able to uh, negotiate? Well, I, I don't have the exact answer. It's a good question. Um, what the federal law does, Obamacare, which is still the law of the land, uh -huh. uh, the Affordable Care Act, mm -hmm. um, allows states to create their own system. Now, it would seem like within that realm, that would be an allowance to decide that you could uh, mm -hmm. negotiate with pharmaceutical companies. The uh, VA already does it on the federal level. So there isn't any reason why it should be yes. blocked. Uh, r right, uh, y y yes. And I, I do know that there is a pr proposed l legislation at the federal level to allow both importation of drugs from Canada, uh, where, where, which is really uh, strange because most of the drugs are made here and imported or exported to Canada, but uh, because they can negotiate drug prices their drug prices are lower than our drug prices, and they would still be lower if we then reversed it so that we would take those drugs that were first uh, exported from the U.S. to Canada and reverse that and sent them back to the United States. The, the, the <laughs> savings are astonishing. Oh, yes. Uh, and uh, although I uh, was originally trained as a mathematics teacher, I don't keep exact track of the exact numbers. Uh, what we do know is, uh, that this, by all evidence, that it's gonna cost a lot of money and we can cover everybody. Mm -hmm. So um, 
We just, uh, for healthcare for all in particular though, we are primarily right now focused on a, a state effort. Uh, uh, we are shifting some of our energy right now to the federal because of what Bernie Sanders has introduced and we're paying close attention to that. But we think that right now the pathway forward is still um, under the current administration of the federal level, the chances of the feds doing anything very quick isn't high. We yeah. think that we can, 2020, we can have a vote right here in Oregon. Um, things have been moving session by session through our state legislature. Uh, there's more and more uh, sponsors on a bill. Um, it was a Senate bill last session, uh, 31 uh, sponsors. And uh, so- it, it, 31 uh, sponsors in the Senate? Uh, no, oh, well, both, uh, both together, House and oh, Senate. Okay, right, okay. House and Senate combined. And um, when we get up to that magic sponsorship level, uh, we, we want to get that referral out to the voters for a vote uh, to create the system here in Oregon. Mm -hmm. okay. And the exact language is, will be you know, worked on between now and 2020. Okay. Uh, it, it, it's, so the language isn't set yet, but the ideas um, are are there. There is quite a bit of language in 1046 about covering every, everybody, including dental, um, mental health, vision, you know, making sure it's comprehensive. Mm -hmm. Okay, and 1046 was- A the, Senate bill in last session. In, in the last session. In the new session, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the uh, bill number would change. In the new session, the bill number would change. Right, okay. And we're hoping and looking forward to hopefully uh, Representative Mitch Green, like a longtime healthcare advocate, mm -hmm. uh, original believer in healthcare as a human right right here in the state, uh, in, in terms of the state legislative level, um, is gonna help uh, lead that funding. And that's a good sign because he chairs the uh, healthcare committee uh -huh. at the in, in the House. Mm -hmm. Okay, are, are you aware of other um, efforts, other bills that might come up in the, in the state legislature that would be a like a step towards single payer? Yeah, um, I think there's been a couple of bills that have already passed uh, recently, um, which was the uh, Re Reproductive Equity Act, mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, which gave access to uh, reproductive care um, broadly. Uh, we did a lot with the uh, children's health care covering all, cover all kids in Oregon. Mm -hmm. So there have been some steps, that, big steps that have been taken care of. In my opinion, the next big step is to focus on uh, 2020. Mm -hmm. um, the legislature in the recent session uh, made sure uh, through something that they passed, uh, which was to make sure the Medicaid expansion stayed in place to cover 350,000 Oregonians and uh, there's a big issue coming up forward right now, which is measure 101, and we're gonna ask everybody to vote yes on measure 101, mm -hmm. because uh, some people don't, don't seem to care about whether people have access, and I can name names if it's okay. Sure, Ju yeah. Ju uh, Representative Julie Parrish, mm -hmm. uh, Representative Cedric Hayden, um, ha have put forth a measure to try to overturn what the legislators have already given the people of Oregon access to health care. Mm -hmm. um, and if that, if we don't say yes to that, 350,000 Oregonians will lose their coverage. Mm -hmm. All right. And we will also lose a lot of federal funding. Mm -hmm. And losing that federal funding is going to completely tie up our uh, legislature in 2018. Mm -hmm. Right. And that. Uh, measure will be on the ballot in January of next year. Just so, that, that, right? It's coming up very, right. very soon. Yeah, right. So there won't be a, there won't be a lot of debate about it. But I'm going to guess that the opposition is gearing up now for some uh, major kind of uh, publicity. Y yes. Uh, right. Okay. Yes. Right. Um, uh, but we have a, a, a large coalition. There's something like 75 organizations, including Healthcare for All Oregon, that have. Uh, signed on to uh, support, and uh, we, we think we have a good plan to go forward to get the yes votes we need mm -hmm. to say the legislature did the right thing, and we agree with covering those 350,000 Oregonians. All right. Okay, good, good. So I'll just say for uh, the cameras uh, that the Alliance for Democracy also urges a yes vote on Measure 101 in January, because we also agree that allowing 350,000 
people to lose their health insurance uh, is totally, it's immoral and it's totally unacceptable. Yes, the healthcare, uh, I'm a nurse, and the American Nurses Association and the World Health Organization basically recognize that healthcare is a human right. Mm -hmm. um, Bernie Sanders recently gave a speech, he talked about, well, you know, we, had, we were free to use guns, we were free to do this thing, free to do that, but we are not free because when you cannot get the health care you need, you lose your freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, a person sick in bed that has no choice is, not, is really not a free person. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, you know, yay Bernie. Yay Bernie. <laughs> yay Bernie, <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, so um, I, I had heard that there, there were some other states that are planning on doing health care initiatives uh, in 2020 also. Oh yes, um, I think I was gonna bring that up when uh, I talked about our Oregon 2020 plan. Oh yeah. Um, right now in California, uh, they're working on um, getting it through their legislative bodies. And if they were able to pull it off in California, it would make it way easier for us here in, in Oregon. Yeah. And uh, for, uh, there's also talk in Washington and Healthcare for All Oregon is in touch with both the people in California and the people in Washington. There is so, some discussion uh, just beginning to start about whether we should have a three state or maybe a four state. Uh, Hawaii pretty much covers everybody yeah. already. Mm -hmm. So uh, a four state compact, you would have a very large pool of people. Um, there would be more portability uh, mm -hmm. around that kind of a plan. So we'll see where that goes, uh, hopefully, and then those discussions go in the next few months. Yeah. But I would love to see California um, get there signed into law. Yeah, so, so if, if, you, if we did this with the, the three or four states, would each state uh, present the same language, or, or do well, you know, or is, uh, I mean, yeah, this gets all really complicated. Yeah, yeah, you're down in the next phase of this, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, opening discussions to say, how do we work together? Mm -hmm. uh, what do we mean? Where would uh, federal law come into play when you're doing interstate business like this? Yeah, 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 I would, I, just speculate, I would, I would think unless each of the states passed exactly the same language, uh, then, uh, it would be hard to get a single system at, for all four, three or four states. Right, but, it, it's gonna take some yeah, discussion to yeah, get things yeah. lined up properly. Yeah, and of course there's the whole compact agreements between states that can happen that might, uh, that might you know, but compacts among states have to be approved by Congress, which would be a problem. So anyway, well, just speculate. It, it, so. But if uh, the Affordable Care Act already allows each state to create their own system, if that's the system that the states want to create, I wouldn't see why it should be blocked. Uh, well, I wouldn't either, but <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. So uh, recently, uh, HCO had their annual meeting. In what, uh, what, what, what came of that? What, uh, well, that was about organizing the movement, right? We are in a state now where we can see a timeline to 2020, and there's two, you know, basically two phases. The, ca the campaign phase coming later, and the pre-campaign phase, which is what we're in now. Mm -hmm. And what that means is we have to uh, get our uh, tools together to uh, make sure that people around the state of Oregon, uh, one, are aware that there's a movement towards single payer in 2020. Two, that they think single payer is the right answer. And how do you do that? Well, straightforward, it's a, it's a psychological th thing that impacts people. Uh, a lot of people already know that they hate their insurance companies, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Who loves their insurance companies? No right? hands raising on that right. one. Right. <laughs> um, so, there, there, were no, there were no hands raised. When I asked the question, I believe, at the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to get, a, 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 just remind people that they hate their insurance companies and that the idea that single payer does mean better care for more people for less money. Mm -hmm. And when they get that and we get that message out, um, people will be ready to show up to vote in favor of the plan. Now, as you know, that's a idea of creating good communication tools, right? Uh, through your Facebook, um, social media, person-to-person -person contact, showing up at 
uh, union halls and union meetings, showing up at community uh, events, uh, bringing our uh, films that we have around the state. Mm -hmm. uh, and in particular, what we've been doing is forming chapters around the state. And uh, the idea of these chapters is for local organizing. And uh, there are, um, the number is slipping my mind right now how many chapters. I'm not the head of the mobilization committee, mm -hmm. um, but it's over a, a do, we have over a dozen chapters right now, I'll just say that number. And, and then we have a, a other, in other places, people that are ready to start forming chapters. And we think that these chapters can be turned into the right campaign organizing tools if they get established right now to just build a base of support in their communities in preparation for uh, the campaign mm -hmm. uh, that would have to start in 2019 or early 2020. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, yeah, yes, and the idea of forming the local chapters, I think, is really, really important to, yeah. to get that message spread across right. the state. And it, a, a lot of um, success is based on uh, personal relationships. And so if you form local chapters, people have personal relationships with the community. They know who to go out to, mm -hmm. who to speak with. They know the, the events that are occurring. And uh, it can decentralize our activity uh, to a great deal and mm -hmm. uh, we think make it more successful. Yeah, right, yeah. I know that I, ha I had intended to, and you may have said this already, some of the organizations that support Healthcare for All Oregon and, and the single payer idea, well, Alliance for Democracy. Well, there I would have given a pitch there. <laughs> My understanding is that you, the, the Alliance for Democracy, was the first organization to jump in and support healthcare for our Oregon when it was formed. Oh, and, and do I have that right? I, I, I don't know. I, that, that very well Maybe it was the first was, one to give some money. <laughs> I, I, I think it's that. I think yes, it's that. Yes. yes. Right. Yes. So but the, we were we were an early, very early, early supporter. Right? Yes. Yes. So uh, Alliance for Democracy, for one, um, a, a lot of uh, unions uh, are on board at the national level. AFL CIO has just said we are going to work for a single payer movement nationally. Uh, that's a, a change in terms of they've been a supporter, but now they're going to uh, work for it. Uh -huh. uh, the uh, American Federation of Teachers, the o Oregon School Employees Association, uh, SEIU, AFSCME, um, union, many, many unions. In mm -hmm. addition, we have uh, a number of county parties, Democratic parties, uh, county parties that have endorsed now Healthcare for All Oregon. Mm -hmm. So they're working within their county party to uh, support and organize. Yeah. So. Uh, those kinds of things are really important. And what we want to do, I'll go back to that pre-campaign uh, phase, is we need everyone to go to hcao.org mm -hmm. and click Statement of Support for, and get in the system so you can keep in the loop of the communication that's going forward. Mm -hmm. When that happens, uh, we will build our database and we can build a big enough database. Target is 80,000. We're about 25,000 people in our database now. And um, so as we move in towards the campaign, we want to have that 80,000 number as a launching point to get that one million votes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, great. And um, so organizations, additional organizations, do they go to the same place on the website and fill out the same form or? Oh, if you want to be, a, um, if you want to be an organizational member, I'd just say you should uh, contact membership at hco.org and uh, the organizational membership is a little slightly different oh, process mm -hmm. than individuals supporting. Uh -huh. uh, or, um, we got a uh, endorsers or membership option, mm -hmm. right? Uh, depending on whether people want to be inside the organization and do that basic work, you know, at meetings or they just want to support the cause from where they're at. Uh, talk about businesses, small businesses. Oh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. If you go to every coffee shop, bar, marijuana shop, hardware, local hardware store, all of these people say, we need access to healthcare. They all see the problem, but they're not really interested in being members. They were uh, of such a structure that being a supporter or an endorsing organization or an endorsing business would uh, probably fit them much better. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, great, yeah. So uh, any final thought before we close out? 
No, I, well, well, I shouldn't say no. Of course, <laughs> that's the wrong thing. Of course there's a final thought. <laughs> okay. um, as a nurse practitioner who has provided care in rural East Tennessee with a tribe in Michigan, with the uh, incarcerated in Multnomah County, places where access to health care uh, financially was not an issue. The jail, the, oh. the tribe, mm -hmm. and even in rural East Tennessee when I worked there years ago. Uh, and then also in the school health centers where I worked. Um, but as soon as you brought the insurance companies into the picture, there was a problem. So we need to work hard together to get rid of the insurance companies. Mm -hmm. With that, we can deal with the pharmaceutical industry, and uh, along with that, uh, the help will be to get our people to go and support us. Again, hcao.org, click on Statement of Support. Um, this will be a game changer for every citizen mm -hmm. not to have to worry about their access to the care that they need. Excellent, good. Thank you very much, Thank Tom, you. for being here. Thank you. All right, great. Thanks. Good. We've been talking with Tom Sinzik, nurse and president of Healthcare for All Oregon, which advocates for a single payer, universal, affordable healthcare system in Oregon, as well as throughout the United States. Learn more about Healthcare for All Oregon at www.hcao.org. Do you agree that corporations are not people and that money is not speech? Then you need to come to this Alliance for Democracy sponsored event on Thursday, December 7th, 7 p.m. at the First Unitarian Church in Portland. Caitlin Saposi Belknap, National Director of Move to Men, will address us in a forum on creating real democracy by ending corporate rule. Move to Men is a national campaign to abolish corporate constitutional rights and eliminate big money from elections. She will, she will report on and discuss actions which have taken place in hundreds of communities across the nation in support of the federal We the People Amendment, HJR 48, as part of a larger movement of needed fundamental democratic changes. So that is Thursday, December 7th, uh, at the First Unitarian Church, Southwest 12th and Salmon here in Portland. Doors open at 6.30, event starts at 7. Thank you for watching. I hope we'll see you again next week. Bye.